Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Atenas and this is Mode Bespoke. For today's project, we are going to be working on this Tunisian crochet scarf. You will need the chart for this project, so head on over to the blog, get your copy of the chart, and then let's get started with this scarf. Alright, so this is going to be a fairly simple project to complete, so long as you have the chart. So I'll pull up the chart here in just a minute so we can all look at it. But this scarf is a really wide scarf. You don't have to make it this wide. So this scarf is a 9 inches across, so it is a really, really wide scarf. You can make it if you only do one repetition of the, of the chart, which I'll show you here in just a second. You will end up with a very narrow scarf. This is uh, just under five inches, I think. But you can use a bigger hook to make it a little bit wider, and then you'll end up with a more standard size scarf. So that is an option as well. I'm only going to do one repetition of the scarf for the, or of the chart, I should say, for this tutorial, and then you can just make it as wide as you want. You can also use this pattern to make a blanket. But let's get started here. I'm going to be using a Tunisian hook. This is just a small double-sided one that I have. Since I'm only going to be making just one repetition, I don't need a really long hook. So if you're going to crochet a scarf this wide, you will need a full-size Tunisian hook. Now there are several different types available, but the size I'm using for this pattern is a 5.5 millimeter. So if you have if you're doing just half of the scarf and you want to use this small double-ended one, I'm using the side that says six. This is 5.5 millimeters, so it's the six. If you are using just regular Tunisian crochet hooks, so this is the regular aluminum one. You can get it at any craft store. Um, other options are this, this is a double-ended hook, so if you only have double-ended hooks, that's okay. You're only gonna use one side of your Tunisian hook, so you can use that too. Or there's also the bamboo ones that you've seen me use in other tutorials that have the really long plastic cord on them. You can use something like that as well. So just be sure you, you get a, a Tunisian hook in order to complete this project. So let's put these down and let's get started. So moving on to the chart, if you head on over to the blog, the link is in the description box below, you will find the written pattern for this as well as the chart. So let's go over the chart real quick. First of all, all of these numbers down here on the bottom. So you have the blue on the side and the blue on the bottom. The numbers on the bottom are your stitch numbers. So you've got one through 36, because this is all worked in multiples of eight plus three. So if you're only gonna make half of this pattern because you only want a scarf that's half as wide, then you would do your multiples of eight. So eight, eight, and then plus three. If you're going to do the whole thing, then it's 8 times 4, because each one of these segments right here, this is 8, this is 8, this is 8, and then this is 8. And then you do three additional stitches, so that you have one here on this side, one on this side, and then what would be your chain one, if you want to look at it that way, to begin your next row. So this pattern is worked from right to left. So you're going to start here on row one, stitch one, and then just work your way across all the way to the end. And then you still have to do your return pass. So you complete your return pass, get back to, to the first stitch, and then you go into the next row. And then you do row number two, and then return pass. Row number three, return pass. We will go over this here in a minute. So the gray stitches, so you'll see these little gray boxes, these are pearls, so it's a Tunisian pearl stitch all of these white stitches are just Tunisian knit stitch. So we will be having to pay attention to that later. If you are left-handed, because I did get that question before, if you are left-handed, instead of reading the chart from right to left, just read the chart from left to right. So you would start on stitch number 34 and then just work your way all the way to stitch number one and then return pass and then go back the other way. So you can read this chart in any direction. Just pick one and stick with it. So if you're reading it from right to left, that's how you're gonna read it. If you're reading it from left to right, 
that's how you're going to read it. Don't switch back and forth or your design will end up messed up. So pick one and stick with it. All right, so the way that we're setting up this scarf is your initial chain is going to be here at the bottom. So this down here is your initial chain. And then you're going to just add length to your scarf. If you're not sure how long to make your scarf, that is a personal preference. The standard rule of thumb is just the, you make your scarf as long as the person that you are making it for is tall. So I typically go with maybe about 60 inches or so for a scarf length, but if it depends on who I'm making it for, um, cause my husband's five, six foot three. So, you know, if I make him a scarf that long, he said it's uncomfortable. I have made him one that is six foot, uh, six feet, three inches. And he said it was, it was a little too long for him. So my standard is just about 60 inches. I do have, uh, one of the patterns that I've set for 70 because that is intended to be a really long scarf. I have some suggested sizes on the blog, so go check that out. If you want to make it any other size, that's up to you. But as far as width goes, you can only make this scarf in half, which is the 5 inches or the 9 inches because they are the different repetitions. If you stop halfway through, it just becomes, so if you wanted to make it 7 inches, it becomes a little difficult here on the edges. So if you're an experienced crocheter and you can um, figure out how to do the edging for that, then go for it. If you're a beginner, then I suggest you either stick with the five or the nine. So let's talk about supplies. This is a medium size yarn. You can use any yarn you want for this project. This is just the yarn that I used. I do have uh, the approximate amounts you're gonna need. It's on the blog, so go check that out but a medium sized yarn with a 5.5 millimeter hook, and it is a Tunisian hook. If you are going to be using a smaller yarn or a, a finer yarn, so such as, for instance, this is a size one fingering yarn. So you see this in a couple of my other tutorials. Normally I use two skeins simultaneously and then just use both threads like this. That would make a size two yarn. If you're going to use a size two yarn, you're gonna to wanna to use a four to 4.25 millimeter hook and for any yarns bigger than a size, uh, than a medium, you're gonna wanna adjust your hook accordingly. So if you're using maybe a chunky yarn, um, you're probably gonna wanna go with maybe a K hook. So maybe it's about a seven millimeter hook. So start with a six and then tr if that is, um, the knitting is too tight for you, then try a seven millimeter hook. But let's, let me get this out of the way and let's get started. So to begin, you are gonna need a slip knot. So to make the slip knot, grab your yarn and wrap it around two fingers. Then you're gonna grab your hook, get the right size hook, insert it into the loop that you've made on your fingers, grab the yarn behind it, and pull this through this loop, like so. Hold it down with your index finger, so that it doesn't fall out. Hold it down with your index finger, and then remove the fingers on your other hand, and then just pull on the two threads at the bottom to tighten your slip knot. All right, now let's turn this around. Did say we were working in multiples of eight plus three. So if you are making the half size scarf, you're going to want to do eight times one and two. So 16 plus three, so it'll be 19, which is what I'm gonna be using. If you're doing the full scarf, then you'll wanna do eight times four and then plus three three. So I'm going to start with a chain of 19 stitches. So to chain, you're going to yarn over. So wrap the yarn around your hook and pull this top loop through this bottom loop for one. Yarn over, pull through for two. Yarn over, three. Yarn over, four and continue until you have 19 uh, chains on your hook, or if you're doing the full size scarf, you will need 35 stitches or a chain of 35 stitches. So let me get this done and I'll see you again in just a moment. All right, so once our chain is complete, we have to cast on. So to cast on, you're gonna go into the second stitch from your hook. So here's the first one, here's the second one. So insert your hook into that second stitch and then you're going to yarn over and pull that loop through this top loop right here. 
So once you yarn over, it's this middle one. And then just pull up the loop. Go to the next stitch and we're gonna do the same. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull the hook out. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So you're gonna pull up a loop for every stitch of your chain. So I'm just going to keep pulling these stitches up real quick. And remember the written instructions, I did go row by row, um, at least for the first, uh, what is it? I think it's like 17 or 18 rows that are on the chart. I did write down the instructions row by row. You can also purchase the PDF pattern. Um, you get the PDF pattern and you get an online version of the pattern. So the online version, if I have to make any corrections to it or anything, it's always going to be up to date. So you get both of those and you should have access to it for, you know, however long, you know, Google continues to let me keep my documents there. So hopefully forever. If any of that ever changes, I would let you guys know. But you can purchase those on the blog. All right. So once you have cast on, so we have just a loop for every one of the stitches of our chain, we are going to work our very first return pass. And now the return pass is going to be the same no matter what row you are on. So the return pass is always the same for this pattern. You are going to do yarn over and pull through one loop. So it will be effectively a chain one, if you wanna look at it that way. So if this were to be crocheted in single crochets, it'd be what you know your chain one for going into the next row would be. So let's do our yarn over and pull through one loop. So this top loop on the hook, like so. And now for the rest of the row, you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So it'll be this top loop and then one additional loop. So you'll pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through one, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through one, pull through two. Yarn over, one, two. Yarn over, one, two. So this is the return pass. So this, you have to complete this after every row, because as you saw, we cast on all of our stitches and now we're removing them to create the row. All right, so now you just yarn over and pull through the last two loops. And there we go. That is our foundation row. Now we get to actually start working the design. So let's look at our chart. So I will only be doing half of these, but let's get started here. I hope you guys can see this here in the background. Our first stitch is a knit stitch, and then we're gonna do two purl. So stitch number one is a knit stitch. To create the knit stitch, if you look at the stitch, it might not be as clearly visible here. There are two threads to this stitch. There's the one in the front and the one in the back. You're gonna insert your hook in between both of those and then go all the way through the stitch, okay? So if we had a, a sideways view, you can see it here. There's this back loop, and the front loop, your hook is gonna go right in between both of those and all the way through the back. This first stitch, so this very first stitch, we skip it every time. So whenever you Tunisian crochet, at least for this, for this pattern and for many of my other patterns, you're gonna hear me say it, you usually skip this unless you're doing increases. We're not doing any. So skip this very first stitch. You already have it. It's right here already on your hook. So go into the stitch number two. In stitch number two, you're gonna insert your hook between both of the threads of the stitch, go all the way through, and then you're gonna yarn over, and you're just gonna pull up a loop. So you're just gonna cast on a loop. And there you go, that was a knit stitch. It was that easy. So we've done our very first knit stitch. That's stitch one, row one. The next two stitches, purl, purl, so let's look at these next two stitches. So it's this next vertical line and then this one. We're gonna work on this top loop of the stitch. So I didn't go through the back. I just pulled up the top loop. Remember that there are two loops. So we're leaving this back one, that one right there. We're leaving that one alone. We're just working with this one. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna do what is called a reverse yarn over. So when you yarn over, you normally go like this and your yarn goes through the back of your hook. 
in a reverse yarn over, you're going to loop the yarn in front of your hook. So it loops like this. So see, it's hanging in front of our hook. So we reverse yarn over, hold it down with your index finger so it doesn't slip out, and now insert your hook behind that vertical stitch. And now you're going to release this yarn. So lift your finger. You're gonna pass this thread. So see how we have that loop on our hook? You're gonna loop this under it. So it's gonna go between your crochet work and your hook. And you're gonna bring it up. And now you yarn over, and you're gonna pull through this top loop. And there we go, that's a purl. Let's do that again. So you're gonna reverse yarn over, and then you're gonna insert your hook into the vertical stitch, so into that next stitch, release the yarn, and pull that under the stitch and around. So it'll be between your crochet work and your hook. And now you yarn over, just a regular one, regular yarn over, and you're gonna pull that through this top loop on your hook. And there's your purl. There. And my chart has decided to time out. All right, so there we go. So we've done stitch number one and we've done our two purls. Now let's move on to stitch four and five, and these are two knit stitches. So we're gonna do the first knit stitch. So here's the next stitch we're working into. Insert your hook between both threads of the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So there's one. Now let's go into the next vertical stitch. Just pay attention to because this one we've already used it, okay? Go into the next stitch, go in between both threads, all the way to the back, yarn over and pull up a loop. So we have two knit stitch. We're gonna follow that up with two purl and then two knit. So let's work on those. So for the purl stitch, reverse yarn over, hold your loop down, insert your hook into the stitch, release the yarn, pull it up to the top, yarn over and pull through a loop for one. Let's do it again. Reverse yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, release your yarn and loop it to the top, regular yarn over and pull through the loop. Now we had two knit stitch. So we're gonna insert a hook into the next stitch all the way through the back yarn over and pull up a loop for one and do the same thing in the second one for two. So there we go. Now the next part of it is going to be, I think it's eight. Um, it's going to be eight purl stitch in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So eight purl stitch in a row. So since we've already covered how to do the purl stitch, I'm just going to crochet these pretty quickly. If you need to review it, go back to the beginning of the row and then just practice a few times until you're really comfortable with the purl stitch. Here we go, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If you're only doing half of the scarf, this is what your work should look like. If you're doing the full scarf, you will still have more stitches left. So if you're working the full scarf, then you're gonna do two knit stitch. So after we finish the eight purl, you're gonna do two knit stitch, and then two purl, two knit, two purl, two knit, and then eight purl. And you will have, you'll be at the same point that we are at. So if you need to pause the video to get to that point, go ahead and pause that. And then the rest of us will continue with this very last stitch of the row. So once you're at the end of the row, you'll have that one last stitch. So it's this right here. Once you've done your knit stitch, you're going to insert your hook behind this stitch. So insert your hook and go all the way through to the back. And make sure you go behind, or through I should say, both loops for that stitch. And then just yarn over and pull up a final loop. 
so you'll have your row completed. Remember that if you are doing the full width of the scarf, you will have your eight purl and then knit stitch and then this last row or this last stitch. I don't know why I'm calling it a row. This last stitch right here. Okay, so now let's move on to our return pass. We're gonna do yarn over and pull through one. And now the rest of the row is yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so forth until you complete the return pass. So I'll work through this really quickly here, just so that I don't have to turn off the camera and reset everything real quick. So here we go, here we go, here we go, and we're at the last stitch. Here we go. And our first row is complete. So now moving on to row number two, it's just gonna be a repetition of this row that we just did. So it's gonna start with one knit, two purl, and then two knit, two purl, two knit, and then eight purl, and then we finish the end. So we'll work through this one a little bit quicker. So the first one is a knit. So here, I'll leave it in the background so you guys can see it. So we've got a knit stitch. So if you need to review these stitches, go back to the previous row and then practice a few times. All right, so we have a knit and then we have two purl. When you get to your row, the two purl look like little knots. So the knit are just kind of straight. The purl stitches have a little knot at the bottom. In case you have to put your work down and you have no idea where you, where you left off, that's what the purl stitch looks like. So we have two purl, two knit, two purl, and then two knit, and then we're gonna have that long section of purl stitches. So we've completed this, which is all of this section. And now we have eight purl, and we can complete the row. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the last one with eight. So we're at the end of the row. If you're doing the full size, you're gonna have a knit stitch. So work your knit stitch, which is this last one right here, and then complete the um, this last stitch. If you're at this point and you're only doing half of the scarf and you also have a knit stitch, just crochet that knit stitch. It's not a big deal. Just add it right there. It'll make a nice clean little edge. It'll look nice and pretty. All right, so here we're at the end. Now this one looks a little bit different. This is how the rest of your Tunisian work is gonna look at the end. So you have this last stitch, which is the one we're gonna be working into. And then you're gonna have these little chains here at the top. So that looks like a stitch here and this one that also looks like a stitch. Make sure you work on this very last one. So it's the one at the very edge. Insert your hook all the way through and go through both loops. So see, you can see the front loop and you can see this back loop. Go through both loops, yarn over and pull up a loop. And there we go. Row number two is done. So we yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two until we finish our return pass. So that's all there's really to it, guys. I'll show you a few things to just pay attention to when you're switching, um, when you're reading your chart, because that's all it comes down to is just a purl stitch and a knit stitch wherever the chart tells you to crochet them. And now that you know how to identify what a purl stitch looks like, so see, it, you can see your knit stitches look kind of long and your purls have little knots. Your work will start to take shape. A couple of pointers here. If you notice, because this happens to me quite often when I when I Tunisian crochet, that this side, wherever your hook is on, so if you're left-handed, it'll be on your left side, but the side that your hook is on, your stitches might be a little more loose, and then these might be a little bit tighter. That's because sometimes we just change the tension as we're working across, so these will generally be tighter. And also, as you're working, you're moving your hook, and these stitches on closest to the hook side, these stitches tend to loosen up. So if that happens, I'll just do a couple of quick, I'll just do knit stitches all the way through. So as you work through, just keep working along, doing all of the stitching that you're supposed to do for your chart. And once you get to the end, 
which I'm trying to get to as quickly as I can without getting my yarn stuck. And I'm kind of failing here, but trying to work. Okay, once you complete your row, what I do at the end is I'll pull on my hook and pull it away from my crochet, uh, crochet work. So you'll notice these are kind of loose. You can even see it here on the hook. And these are kind of tight. So I just pull on this a little just to loosen up the stitching. So pull it away from your work. So just kind of pull it up. Don't, don't go too, too much. Because if you pull it this much, then this side is going to be really loose. Just pull it a little bit. You just want to loosen up the tension on these last stitches. And then you complete your return pass. And that's all there's there's to this. So read the rest of the chart. Um, pay attention to a couple of different sections because this is worked in multiples of eight so you would think that both sides like that all of these bars are all eight. They're not. There we go. So these horizontal stripes or lines or whatever you want to call them, these bars, these are eight stitches. These are only seven. So you work seven rows of purl. On row number eight, you're working a complete row of knit stitches. So it's all knit stitch all the way across. And then for row number nine, you have a few knit stitch and then you start again with your purl. So just pay attention to that. This is seven rows. It's not eight rows. Row number eight is all knit. So remember it. When you complete your rows, so when you do rows one through 16, you repeat the pattern. So it's one through 16 and then you start again on row number one and then go one to 16 and then again one to 16 and just over and over. However many com um, repetitions you do of rows one through 16 is the length you're going to end up with your scarf. So just measure it as you go. If you don't end on row number 16 by the time you reach the length of your scarf, that's okay. You can end wherever you want. So just make sure that you crochet the length that you want for your scarf. Again, suggested measurements and just kind of guideline amounts are all on the blog. It is free. Go check it out. Link is in the description box below. Now for the tassels. So I did not write these into the pattern. These are optional. So your scarf will just end up just with a little straight edge and you can add fringe, you can add tassels, you can add whatever you want to the end or just leave it as is. If you are going to add tassels, this is how you would work with those. So just grab your yarn. I'm just using a different yarn here. You're just going to grab your yarn and measure how long you want the tassel to be. So I wanted mine to be pretty long. So you can make it as long as you want. And then you're going to fold it and double it over. So this is going to be two little hairs on the tassel. I had 20 on mine. So it was just a total of 20 threads. So this is two and then fold it over. So I'll get closer. So right where that ends, just fold it over and go again. So that's three and then four, five, six. You can do it this way or you can wrap it around something. Um, you can use a tablet, a book or whatever and just wrap it around however number of times that you want. Just make sure that you count so that if you're doing four tassels, that all four tassels are the same thickness. So if you wrap it around a book, count how many times you wrapped it around your book. Um, but once you have completed, uh, once you've reached the number of threads, I guess, that you want on your tassel, you're going to loop that through your scarf. So here I'm at the end, here we go. So what I do is on this last loop around, I just kind of see where the yarn ends this is the side I cut. So line up all of these little loops. So line all of them up like that, like that. There we go. And then grab a pair of scissors and cut right here. So you're going to have these really long threads. So it'll open up and double up in length. Then, what you do? So don't actually open it up. I'm just letting you know that that's what will happen. Pass this top part. So put all these loops together. And this is a lot neater if you use something like a book to make your tassel. I'm just kind of doing it this way, but it's a little bit easier because all these loops are all together. So you're going to pass these loops through wherever you want it on the scarf. 
So if I want my tassel to be, you know, in the corner, I just pick a corner stitch. I'm just gonna find any one of these stitches. Grab your hook, because that makes it easiest. So I'm gonna pull my hook out of here. Grab your hook, pull it through the stitch that you wanna pull the, the tassel through, and then grab on to your yarn. So there you go, insert it through that loop, and then just pull it through. So now you're going to open this up and you're going to grab your tassel, loop that through, and there you go. And that's how I add tassels to my work. Alternatively, instead of cutting it at the beginning, you could just loop it like this. See, I didn't cut mine. Just go through, loop it through, and then just cut it. So you can make all four tassels and then just line them up and cut them so they're the same length. So that's normally what I do and I end up with some really nice tassels that, you know, you can leave them out. You can leave them on when you wash and nothing happens. If you're afraid that these are going to fall off, you can use a little drop of super or not super glue, a uh, hot glue. So you can get a hot glue gun and then just put a small drop right here at the bottom on the scarf. And when you pull this, make sure you pull it nice and tight on that hot glue. Be careful because it will be hot, okay? Pull that tight. And then as that dries and cools, it will hold on to your tassel a lot better. So that is another option. But that's it, guys. That's all there's so to go it. Go check out the blog. The pattern is available on there for free. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I post videos every Thursday. If you want to see more of my work, you can also follow me on Instagram. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down in the comments section down below. Like and share if you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I will see you all again next Thursday.